Well, hello friends, my name is Ari Ferger and today I'm going to talk about what is Ragnarok. It seems this month is dedicated to this subject. On the previous video I have talked about Ragnarok and also some references from the Bible to compare them with the tale of Ragnarok. Surprisingly, a lot of people think that Ragnarok reflects the end of days prophecy and I wanted to show you that Ragnarok has clear evidences from the Christian mythology because this tale was passed to parchment during medieval Scandinavia, a time in Scandinavian history greatly influenced by other religious realities. So it's perfectly natural that in the Norse myths we see patterns with Christianity. However, today I'm going to tell you what Ragnarok is and trying to see this event in a pagan perspective, trying to perceive what Ragnarok was to our Norse ancestors before being influenced by Christianity. Ragnarok, the Doom of the Gods as it is commonly known, is the name the pre-Christian Norse gave to the end of their mythical cycle. The myths of Norse mythology form a cyclical narrative since the creation of the cosmos all the way to the end and in between events that will inevitably lead to the downfall of the gods and the end of all things. But after that comes the recreation once more. In a very simple way this is what Ragnarok is, a never-ending story, a cycle that will keep on going. This exact point is what makes Ragnarok so different from the end of this prophecy. There won't be an end of the world or life itself, but there must be a tremendous chaos and death so that recreation and life can sprout once more, and the cycle continues. This important detail shows us that certain religions such as Christianity are not world-accepting religions and progressively the followers of such religions lost contact with the natural world. And this is reflected on their mythological accounts. On the other hand, pagan religions such as the Norse one were very much in contact with nature, so their cyclical mythology reflects their own view about the natural world that surrounds them. Norse mythology is a cycle that begins with birth, that follows life, death and finally a rebirth. And here we go again. The same cycle reflected on the year, the seasons, the movement of the sun and the moon and the life cycle of everything in nature. In the myths, we notice that Ragnarok was foretold in many prophecies and in terrible dreams. The gods do everything to postpone the terrible events and even to reverse the events. All the preparations were made, but to no use. The gods couldn't escape their fate, they couldn't escape their tragic destiny. So what the gods did was to prepare as best as they could for the inevitable. Even if they were going to die, they would die giving their best. And this is quite interesting because it shows the view the Norse had about life itself. Every mortal is doomed to die, but should we sit in our corner lamenting the inevitable or should we try to live life as best as we can? You only live once, right? Christianity doesn't have the same view on life as the pagan Norse. From birth to death you are preparing your place in heaven and you are trying to save your soul and your objective in this world only comes down to that. So Ragnarok at the very beginning already shows us perspectives that can't possibly be compared to Christianity. So the gods made their preparations for the final battle against the giants and other forces that will invade the world of the gods and bringing their doom. The great wolf Fenrir was imprisoned, the gods broke their hosts and chained Fenrir fearing his strength and power, trying to prevent the great beast from killing the gods and bringing their foretold doom. Odin started to gather the best of mortal warriors to defend the gods in the final war, and the god Baldr was killed, which triggered a series of events that would bring the wrath of the gods, and in horror and hysteria the gods' actions made their situation even worse. In their grief they created new and powerful enemies, and the prophecies were starting to make sense, and all at once everything was happening as foretold. Loke was also imprisoned, his children killed by the madness of the gods, fearing the inevitable. After all the preparations were made for the coming war that will destroy the gods, a series of foretold events start to happen, showing that the beginning of the end started. 
Gods and mortals abandon their old ways, disregard the bonds of kinship, breaking oaths, and an atmosphere of suspicion and hostility is built. After these three winters came, in a row, with no summer in between, a devastating era of darkness. There will be lots of conflicts, terrible wars, and discord and chaos rules. And at last, the god Loki and his son, the wolf Fenrir, who had both been chained up to prevent them from wreaking further destruction upon the Nine Worlds, broke free of their chains and set about doing precisely what the gods who had imprisoned them had feared. Don't forget about this important point. On another video, I shall give you more details about the events that lead to Ragnarok and the events during and after the Doom of the Gods and the recreation. Anyway, the final battle came and not only the gods die, but the land itself perishes. A great void is created again, just like in the beginning of the cosmos. Ginungagap exists once more. This is an age of darkness and silence. A repose, just like the repose of nature during winter and remember that conflict and and death began when the three winters came. Then the world was recreated, the rebirth of nature and all life. The gold Baldr returns from the underworld, bringing light and joy into the new world. A new pair of humans comes forth and a better world is built once again and the gods return. In this tale of Ragnarok, it's printed one of the most terrible fears the people from ancient Scandinavian societies feared from the fear of knowing their destiny. We see this reflected on the way shamans, prophetesses, Volvor and so on were treated by the Norse society. They revered such people but feared them at the same time, because these people knew the destiny of the ones seeking their help and no one wanted to know how and when they were going to die because they would live the rest of their lives in fear of that day, avoiding everything to postpone their doom, living a life of anxiety and paranoia, suffocating in their own fear. Being ignorant of their own death was a blessing, and this is exactly what happened to the gods. After knowing their destiny, they completely lost their minds, and in their maddening fear, they unchained a set of events that broke their doom. Out of their own fear, they created powerful enemies such as Fenrir and Loki, uh, the ones that brought destruction and death to the gods. Had the gods be ignorant about their destiny, maybe things would have another course, and maybe many lives had been spared. This is perhaps one of the morals of this tale. There is nothing we can do to avoid the inevitable. Everything and everyone must die, but until then, just be ignorant about it and live life as best as you can. Don't be like the medieval Christians who only live life to save their souls in a terrible paranoia and anxiety, waiting for their deaths and forgetting how to live. We actually see this in archaeology. I have worked on a digging site between the end of the Roman Empire and the beginning of the medieval era. You can actually see that with the introduction of Christianity in the lives of the populace, people stop building things to last. People stop building their own homes and other worldly things that would bring their comfort and security. They went from amazing complex architecture to mud huts, because they started to live life only to prepare themselves and their souls for the death and the life in the afterlife. It didn't matter building things to last if the aim wasn't living in this world. The objective was living on the other side. This was a terrible era of fear, a terrible pause in the human history. So I think Ragnarok reflects the doom the fear of death brings, abandoning life, disencouragement, listlessness. In your fear of the inevitable, you will end up dragging others with you into the lifeless void. Ragnarok tells you not to worry about the end, but to worry about your actions during life. After the end, there will be a rebirth, so why being paranoid? Alright friends, thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and the next one will also be about Ragnarok, and possibly the last one about this subject. Once again, thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video, all the links to my social media are down below at the description. So, once again, tak